Good morning from day six for us here in the UK. Workouts have been done, showers have been had. It only took us a half hour to figure out how to work the washing machine. And now we are about to get on the road to the place that we were going to yesterday that we missed. We are going to the Ponchkosulti Aqueduct. I think there's an R in there. I heard someone say it and they said there was an R. We're going to an aqueduct. We just got to the visitor center. Um, it's cold outside. It's colder here than when we left our um, Airbnb. It's not an Airbnb. It's a holiday cottage. So we're going to go in, check out what the visitor center has to offer, and then hopefully get tickets to go on a longboat ride that takes you across the top of the aqueduct, which is super tall. It's very big. Um, you cannot book online for this particular company. It's kind of a first come first serve, but the Easter holiday is over now. Everybody has gone back to school and back to work. Uh, so hopefully it won't be too busy in there and we won't have any trouble. After three places of parking, we finally found one that we can park in. It's in the chapel tea room. We're gonna try to go back there for lunch. We have a few minutes to catch the boat. We're gonna run. Okay, bye. Imagine all the things that we could see. Yeah, don't you know that life's a dance? Come take my hand and fly away with me. If you're feeling brave, you're more than welcome to stand by the hatches at the back, but if you do so, we just ask that you're cautious, as you will be working in some narrow conditions, and we'd like to say that you can take all of your body parts home with you. So please make sure you keep your heads, hands and any of the limbs firmly within the confines of the boat at all times. pieces of cast iron created at the foundries at Kevinmower and Trevor, owned by William Hazeldine. The pieces were brought up here, bolted together, and then made watertight with a gasket of Welsh flannel dipped in boiling sugar, which was then finished off with lead. So yes, you did hear me correctly. It's always reassuring to know when you're halfway along that you're floating on a bridge that's been held together with treacle.
are on the return now. Uh, the actual trip across doesn't take very long, maybe only like 10 minutes, but the key is waiting your turn to go back. We're currently stopped because there's people coming over on canoes. There's only enough space for one boat to go at a time. So that's why they say approximately 45 minutes because they could take longer for the return trip. Um, I think it's totally worth it. I think it was what, 10 pounds? Um, 10 pounds a piece for adults, but it's really cool. It's really unique. I think it's such a, a different thing to do. Definitely worth it in my opinion. to say Pont Cassette. It starts off nice and easy with P-O-N-T, it's Pont, and then after that it starts going into the Welsh, <laughs> which uh, is C-Y-S-Y-L-L-T-E, Cassette. So yeah, so the double L. That was very, very close. all over you. Oh, it's fine, that's part of the Welsh language. Um, so the double L you have in Welsh, I did explain a little bit earlier, but for the sake of the camera, um, the double L in Welsh is just extremely phonetic. It's the sound of an L extended. So you keep your tongue in the same place as if you're saying the letter L. Instead of pronouncing it, you just force air around it instead. So L, quite literally. So you okay. do have that sh sound in the English language in the word athlete. So the space between the TH and the L, you're doing it naturally. It's just training yourself to do it independently. Now, there's also the double D, mm -hmm. which is the TH. It's a, it? Yeah, it's okay. a hard TH sound. Uh, a good example of that locally is you've got an old building around Wrexham called Irvig. Well, that's where we were at yesterday. Ah, yeah, there we Irvig. go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So E R double D I G becomes Irvig, quite literally. Um, so the same rule that applies to the double L's and the double D's is the same with F's. So a single F becomes a V. So the village of Vron at the other side is F R O N. Two Fs becomes the soft F that you'd associate with other places. Okay. So the same as in English with of and off. Yeah. We have two extra That makes so much more sense. Okay, yeah. So we have two extra vowels in Welsh as well. Our Ys and our Ws constitute as vowels. A W is like an U sound. Um, there is a village on the way down from here to Cardiff called Cumbran, if you're ever on the train. So that's C W. M B R A N Kum Bran. Um, and then a Y is a sort of whatever noise makes sense here kind of noise. Um, so in the case of Pont Cassette. So Welsh being extreme phonetic, we don't have certain letters that you expect in English either. We don't have a K, we don't have a V. Um, we don't have a J or a Z either. So yeah, we don't need a K because the C is always going to be a hard C and we don't have a V because you've got a single F instead. Thanks. Mm, thank so, you. So, so say it one more time. Let's hear it. Oh god, punch. I got that far. Yep, yep, yep. Self tape. Perfect. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> we just finished our boat tour. We had a wonderful Welsh lesson. If you're interested in coming and taking the boats across, we definitely recommend Anglo Welsh. Their little boat's name translates to Little Star. In Welsh, it is Seren Vach, which I just learned how to say, which is pretty cool. Also, before I forget, the aqueduct at its tallest point, just over the middle of the river, is 126 feet and 8 inches. And the other thing that's kind of cool, I'll cut in a video if we get some, uh, just across the river from the viaduct is the house of the man who was building it. And out his front windows, he watched it all go up.
we're smack in the middle now. There is a handle that once every 10 years, they block off both sides of the aqueduct. They pull the plug, all of the water drains back out into the river, and then they come in and do maintenance and clean it and everything. Pretty cool. There's a picture in the gift shop. I'll pop it in. We are finally finished over at Anglo Welsh and exploring the uh, Pontesculthly, I don't know, maybe that was close, aqueduct. Uh, we're now at the Chapel Cafe. We're going to grab some food. Park next to the Chapel Cafe, it's two pounds. If you eat there and you spend more than five pounds, you get that back. So uh, this is really kind of the best place to park. There isn't really anywhere else that we could find. Put Chapel Cafe into your GPS. Come here, park here. The narrow boats are literally right across the street with the aqueduct and the visitor center and all of that. That is lunch done. It was delicious. And now we're off to see some waterfalls. Everyone here is so stinking nice. On our walk across the aqueduct, we ended up talking to, um, I think he was wearing like a vest that said lifeguard on it, had all a bunch of medical stuff, but either he was walking across the viaduct as well. We got stuck smack in the middle at the highest point and we chatted for like a half an hour about the history of the viaduct and all kinds of things. And then in the cafe, there was a sweet set of grandparents sitting behind us with their uh, little granddaughter um, who was just the most adorable baby waving to everybody little tiny hellos all over the place and then as we were coming out he asked us if we'd already been across the the viaduct we said or the aqueduct we said yes and then he recommended another way to drive to get a good view and uh, the next town over and we chatted for a few minutes everybody is just so nice I just wanted to pop in and let you know that we're gonna break this day into two vlogs. Uh, we thought we'd be able to cram it into one, but it'll be really, really long, and I don't think it would do either location justice. So we're gonna stop here for the day, and we'll pick you up in the next one.